bazoka bahanda rima kozoka lama yeke bosha raba babu zanda lama ga raba mabu zoka tarabo sheka labo yantururu riba babu zoka ta mashaka taraba raba buzo kala mahanda riba koyandu riba koshanda makayandu raba buzo katalaya rema kayezi yanturubo yekebo mashata laraba razala kanturubaga mashala yazi yakota yekebo shenderiria maliyazi yanturuba ya mabu shandariaga malama handara boza ye keboza shekeri anturuba mababa bo shantala mahanda reba mabose kala yande mashaka taraba raba babo soka yande thank you jesus shekeri anturubo zoka tarama liba mabozolo bo senteri asika shama handara mahanda rabo zoka labayando ye ke babo shata Reba makozolo kata sheliri anteriri aza mashala mando robo zanda rabaganda mashala ba mazanda labo zota yebo shanda makanda liyazita imaboshi raba babo zoka babo yazi ala handari ya babo mashala gantororo reba makozi ala handa mashaka taraba raba babo zo mashaka talama siyata yeke babosha rima kozolo baganda rima sekalaba mashata laba raba bozo ka makaya taraba mashaba babo reba boze yalaba ye kama koyalama makala mahanda rama ha malahasi ala haraba yere riba shaleria yere ria sekeriri anturu babos you are to be praised lord i exalt you ria bosh rima salama handa rama handa Shatala babo so katara mashanda. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> now, praise the name of our living God. God bless you so much for being here this morning. I thank God for you and I thank God for this opportunity. It's Revival Sister Betty here. It's 10 a.m. in the morning, past two or three minutes. And um, God has graced us with another morning because he had in his purposes and in his will he knew that you would be here he knew that i would be here so god bless you so much today is on wednesday and this is my facebook page with my holy sister pity and i'm honored as the servant of the lord to be able to minister the word of god to you today but before that uh, i want us to begin with a word of prayer father in the name of jesus christ i bless you i thank you for this uh divine opportunity divine encounter that you've given us this morning it is by your grace it is by your power that uh you've uh, decided to honor us with your word because your word is life it is spirit oh lord i thank you my father because without you we can do nothing i thank you for this grace i thank you for the power of the cross and also thank you my god because this is uh an opportunity that you've given us oh lord to be able to share your word so that your children can actually be equipped so I pray for everybody that is going to be here at this time. Those who are going to watch it later on, I thank you, my God, because there are those who have purposed to be able to listen to your word today, this morning, from all over the world. So I thank you. I submit myself under the authority of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for your power because it is here, O oh Lord. I thank you for your grace that was released at the cross because of the saints, O oh Lord, because you loved us so much, O oh God. To this point, through this journey, I thank you because you're holding our hands and despite every other thing that is happening around us, we are focusing on you, Lord. We are focusing on your grace, Lord. We are focusing on what you're supposed to do while you're still here. So I thank you. I worship you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, do believe and pray. Amen. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, every Wednesday, uh, we always get to share uh, the word of God. And uh, the word of God is very important for you, is very important for me in my life because um, there is what the Lord actually left us with. It increases our faith. Amen. Uh, the word of God is able to sanctify us. It is able to cleanse us. It is able to wash us. Uh, it is able to, uh, to help us to walk in the wills of God. 
It is able to help us to stand firm. Amen. So that whatever it is that um, read and meditate upon it, like the Lord told Joshua, it's not only reading, it's not only meditating, but it is the truth. It is Christ himself speaking to your spirit. So when you receive the word of God, amen, because the Holy Spirit helps us to receive the word of God, um, you, your life cannot remain the same basically. So even though we were not there when uh, the, the word of God was being written, but when you read it and you meditate upon it, you feel like something has actually changed inside you. You don't remain the same. And that is why we are here so that uh, on Wednesday we get to listen to what the Lord is actually saying. So whatever it is that you're watching from, I urge us to share the word of God. You're on Facebook. You can just take your phone and share to as many people as you can. Uh, because I believe that the Lord has given us uh, this grace at this time. Uh, to be able to receive something from the Lord. And I thank God for this platform because we get to reach to so many people. There's so many people who are hungry for this world, all over the world. So if you can take this opportunity to share to as many people as you can, then the Lord is going to bless you abundantly. And whomever is going to receive this through your sharing, you're going to play the role of evangelizing in the name of jesus christ so thank you so much those who are on those who are going to watch this later on god bless you but those who are here right now and you have the opportunity to share i'm asking us to do so and god is going to bless us so um i want us to go to the word of god and uh, listen to what the holy spirit wants to give us this morning right now and we are going to be blessed Welcome so much, Brother Bernard, and every other person that is watching this right now. So um, we've been uh, working on the series of running race and from from the for the past like three Wednesdays, and I thank God because um, we are on a journey, and it's called the journey of faith. It's called uh, the walk of faith, and that is what happens to all of us who have actually decided. I need the Lord more. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the power. You know, once you feel like this is what I need, that is what you go for. And that is what we went for when the Lord actually was so gracious enough to give us his power through the grace of the Holy Spirit. So I thank God because we are on a race and you're running the race. And that is what you've been talking about for the past few weeks. And I thank the Lord because he had already purposed that one time you're going to be born, you're going to come into the world, uh, this world, and you're going to do something really big. And you're going to walk with the grace of God because that is what is happening to us. We need the power of God. We need the Holy Spirit. And uh, while you're still here in this world, everybody has a destiny. We all have our destiny. We all have our God-ordained destiny, our own purposes, something special that God put inside you and when he put it inside you, he knew that this is what you're going to become by the grace of God and by the power of God. And that is what the enemy is trying to fight. He's trying to fight our destinies. So while we're still here, we have to make sure that while you're on that journey, you are able to run uh, according to the rules that have been placed before us. And I know that our God is very faithful. So we've been looking at Christ and uh, what Christ has was able to achieve while he was here and he's the one that gives us hope he's the one that strengthens us and uh, he helps us to see that it is very very possible to be here and do what god wants you to do and still be where god wants you to be after everything is said and done we are going back to our lord jesus christ and i thank god for that because the challenges are only for a time the persecutions are only for a time Everything that you're going through that might be difficult for you at this time or at this juncture of your life is only for a time because God knows at the end of all this and at the cross he said that it is finished and one day we are also going to say that it is finished too and you're going to see what God is going to do in our lives by his grace. Now, um, how are we going to run your race? How are you going to ensure that you get to the place that you want to be. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ, because you have been called to follow in, in his footsteps, was able to make it. 
There's something really special he did. Because before he went, there's something, there's some powerful words that he said. He said, even though I have to go, even though I have to leave, I'm going to leave you with somebody very, very special. And even if I'm not going to be there, but I'm going to leave you with somebody. And that person is called the Holy Spirit. Amen. The day that we actually gave our lives to Christ, everybody has their own personal testimony. We all have something that Christ did in our lives. Everybody has something to say. There are things that we have in our hearts. And the most important thing is that Christ said that I have to leave. And even though I'm leaving, I'm going to leave you with somebody who's going to be with you. He's going to guide you into all truth. He's going to show you my ways. He's going to comfort you. He's going to remind you of the things to come. Now, that is something that is actually very, very powerful. Uh, uh, we need to follow this in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome so much, Brother Gita. God bless you so much. Let's keep on sharing. Now, while we run this race, while we are walking the walk of faith, while we are still here, we are not going to do it alone. Why? Because Christ himself already set the pace and said, that I'm going to leave you with a helper. Now, if you read the book of John, uh, chapter 14, verse 16, there's something that is there. John 14, 16 says this, that, um, and uh, I will pray the Father, and I will pray unto the Father. I will pray unto the Father. And uh, when he says, when God says that I'm going to pray unto the Father, it means that, this is very, very important. For you to go into prayer, it means that you want to speak to your father. This is something that is not ordinary. You want to actually get the attention of your father. Why did he say these words? He says that I am going to pray to the father and he is going to give you and I shall give you another comforter that he, he may abide with you forever. What does this statement mean? It means that... Uh, the Holy Spirit, the same as the Comforter, He needs to abide with us forever because of the long journey that is ahead of us. Because of the long race that is ahead of us. Like I said, in, in the physical, it seems like a marathon. Amen. It's, you're just you, you're just running. You're running. It's, you're, you're on a race. You're on a race. You're going. But the most powerful thing or the most important thing that the Lord left for you he left for me. He left for his church, for the believers, because the, the people of the world cannot understand what you're talking about. But he said that I'm not leaving you alone, but there's somebody that is going to come to you and is going to be with you forever, forever. Meaning that this person that you're talking about is actually very, very important. You see, the same way that you need oxygen, we cannot live without oxygen. That is why when somebody is on a machine and they're on, and they're on oxygen, it means that they're at a very critical point. They're at, their life is, is at 50-50, except by the grace of God and by the hand of God. This is what we mean when talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, in this walk of life, when you're running your race in this life, the, the Lord said that I'm not leaving you alone. John 14, 16 actually talks about the Holy Spirit. Our comforter. The one that strengthens us. And that is why in the book of Romans chapter 8 verses 34 says that it says that, that Christ is on the right hand of God interceding for the church. Christ is at the right hand of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 34. And he's interceding for the church. Why is our Lord interceding apart from the Holy Spirit? We are still on the topic of running your race because he knows my warriors are on earth. My children are on earth. My saints are on earth. Fighting the good fight of faith. They are on the rest. And he knew because he's all omnipresent, he's all knowing, he is God. He knows that the journey that is going to be here with us is not going to be an easy one. It's, not been, it's, it's never easy. It's not going to be easy because remember, even if you want to be where the Lord wants us to be, the things that you have to go through while you're still here. But... The thing is that you are not alone. Christ himself, because we are reading, we are, uh, we are reading the word of God and then we, we are talking about it. He, say, he said that in his word, 
in the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 34. I'm going to read that verse. I'm going to read it. Romans chapter 8, verses 34. If you have your Bible, mine is King James Version. It says this, that uh, uh, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Ye rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? So I need you to know one thing. That the Lord is actually interceding for us. And he's standing in the gap for us. That is what is called to intercede. You know, the times uh, for us who are in Christ and are, uh, have believed the grace and the power of the cross. There's something called intercession. So the Lord is actually interceding on our behalf. He's praying for us day and night, every hour, every minute, every second. And that is what you've also been called to do as the church of Christ or as the body of Christ. And that is why the word of God says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, that you need to pray without ceasing. Always praying, always seeking the face of our God, always telling the Lord, here I am. I am. I, 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 I need to, to dig deeper. I need to seek the face of God because the journey is so long. Amen. From the time you're born and from the time that you've actually realized and you've understood yourself, this is what I need to do. The Lord has always been there. I need you to know that. Uh, the times and seasons that we are in might not be that easy, but the Lord says that I know you're on this journey. I know you have to go. To, I know you have to go to school. Um, I know you have to work. I know you have your family members. I know that there are things that you need, and I know that you're on a long journey. But despite all that, I am praying with you. I am praying for you. I am praying for my church. I am praying for those that are lost. I am declaring healing upon your life. I am still there. But aside from him saying those words, he left us with his Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Truth. Now we've been reading from the book of John chapter 14, verse 16. And we've said that. The Lord says that, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. So the prayer is there. And the comforter is here with us while we're still here. And that is why uh, even when you are in that series, you're in that period when you feel like, I feel like that I'm, I'm so low today. Um, I'm going through financial crisis. I don't know what is going on with my family. There are things that I'm going through that I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. But that is the Holy Spirit. That is why. The people of the world cannot understand when they go through all the stress, something called depression. You know, there's, there's so many terms that are here today, scientific terms that are there. But when it comes to this kingdom of God, the, the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, the, the, in the terms of the things of the spirit, we know that things are, are actually very different. So, and I will pray unto the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. I'm going to pray to the Father so that he can give you the comforter, so that he can abide with you forever. Forever seems like a very, very long time. So while you're still here, the comforter is here with us. He's there to encourage us, to stand with us, because it is not easy. The Lord himself knew that things are not going to be easy for my church. The enemy is going to be there, trying to distract us. The issues of life are going to be there trying to bring us down. We have diseases that are there. We have wicked altars that are fighting against us. Everything else might be seem, might seem like it is against you. But I want you to remember the words of Christ, that the Holy Spirit, I'm giving you another comforter, and is going to be with you forever until we hear the trumpet, until the Lord says, the time has come for you to come home, to be where I am. Amen. And that is why we read the word of God. That is why we meditate on the word of God. To remind us of what the Lord is trying to tell his church. To stay put. Keep the fire burning. Keep seeking my face. 
Keep reading and meditating on my word. Stand firm, stand firm, stand firm, because it is not you, but it is I, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, working in you, strengthening you at this time. In the name of Jesus Christ. What am I trying to say? The Holy Spirit is part of the package. The Holy Spirit is part of the package. As long as we are still here, I thank Jesus Christ for what he did. And I thank him because of the words that he said that I am leaving you with the comfort and is going to abide in you forever until I come. Until you hear the trumpet sound that says that I want you to come and be where I am. In the name of Jesus Christ, we just have to believe the word of God. Because if we don't believe what the Lord is telling us, we are going to suffer from doubt. We are going to see like, uh, like uh, we, we are going to live a defeated life and it is not in the will of God. How can you live a defeated life? How can you surrender at a time like this? How can we live like we are not having any hope? Brethren, it is not the will of God. Run your race because the Holy Spirit is there in the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus says that, he says that I have to pray. To mean that the matter or the issue at hand was very critical. It was very important at that time. Very critical. Because remember, the work of the enemy in John 10, 10, he says that the work of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But if you read down there, it says that, but I have come that you may have life in abundance. So even if he is the master schemer, even if, is going to do all of these other things that he tries to do, like to, to distract you, to, de, to discourage you, amen, to, to make you feel like you're down. At the end of the day, while you're still running your race, I want to let you know the one that is in you is greater than the one that, that is in the world. Meaning you have something that is in you that is very powerful, that is very unique, that cannot be bought with any amount of money. This is something that we receive for free by grace in the name of Jesus Christ through faith. Amen. The same way we, when you're saying you're walking in power, you can only walk in power if you are, have accepted the grace that the Lord has. And that is why we cannot buy the Holy Spirit. It's something that we receive after we have actually decided and purpose in our hearts that I need you, Lord. So there's nothing like being defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 16. So number one, uh, we need to understand that John chapter 8, verses 44 says that the enemy is the father of all lies, but the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. There's nothing like error with the Holy Spirit. It is not there because he is the spirit of truth. He is the mind of God. He knows the things of God. He's there to lead us, to guide us in the walk of life. I'm telling you, it is not easy. Why are we saying it's not easy? Because the word of God says so. It is not easy. It is not a walk in the park. But I thank the Lord because of the grace and the Holy Spirit that has been showered upon our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, God knew or the Lord knew that when my children are still here, while my, uh, while my church is still here, there are things you are going to go through. And one of the things is, he says is that he knew that while we're here, we cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. He knew that the battles that are here are not going to be easy. But if my church is going to have my Holy Spirit to walk with them, to guide them, to comfort them, to show them the way, then running the race while we are still here, the Lord is going to make his grace sufficient upon our lives. And um, there's something here. You know, nobody can walk alone. There is nothing like a lone ranger. We, nobody can walk alone. Even millionaires, billionaires, those people who have so much money, they still need people. It's the same way in the spiritual realm. We need the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why, while we are still here, while you're still here on a mission, 
doing the things that God wants you to do, still pursuing uh, maybe your education, you're pursuing your dreams, there's, there are things that you want to do. We need to know that the Holy Spirit is part of the package. Now, if you read verses uh, 17, it says that, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how you handle your issues, but there comes a time in our lives whereby friends may not be so close, your family members may not be so close. The Lord wants it to be you and him. It is just you and the Holy Spirit so that he can speak to you, so that he can show you that, so that he can show you that I can talk to you. I can show you the way. I can. You can consult me. I can guide you into all truth. Whatever it is that you need while we're still here. There comes a time in our lives whereby we feel like I just want to draw closer to God. It's not to say that we don't have friends, but I feel like I need to draw as close as I can to the Holy Spirit, to, to hear His voice, because there's something that I know the Lord wants to do in my life while I'm still running in this race, but He wants me to get as close as I can so that I can see His power, so that I can hear His voice, so that he can guide me and counsel me into all truth. Because he's the spirit of truth. Remember, Jesus had to pray for the comforter to come. We read from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Why was he coming? The comforter was coming so that while we are still here, we could have someone to guide us in this long, very long journey of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord himself says in the book of John chapter 14, verse 16, I have to pray for the comforter to come, but let me leave so that he can come, so that you can see my power, so that you can witness about me, so that you can stand firm in the faith knowing there is nothing that the enemy can do to destroy my church because you have the power in you to stand firm. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our God is all knowing. And the enemy knows that his days are numbered. And it is in times like this. We tell the Lord. I just want to hear more of you. I want to get so close to you. I want to read the word of God. I want to know who is this Holy Spirit. And how it is that I can stand firm. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the book, verse 17 says that. John 14, 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he cannot, they cannot see him. They don't know him, but we know him because he dwells in us and is going to be with us. Now that is the book of John chapter 14 verses 17 in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while we are running our races, the things that we saw, first of all, what do we experience this? What, what do we experience when we are running our race? One of the things that comes to, has come to everybody's life because all believers have passed through this. Nobody is immune to trials and tribulations. First, first of all, why is the Holy Spirit there? We have something called trials and tribulations. Now that is in the book of um, um the book of First Peter chapter one. When you're running your race, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Uh, there, there's something there the Lord wants us to read. First Peter chapter 1. From verses 6 to 9, it says this. That um, wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness. Through manifold temptations. Amen. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith. Being much more precious. Than of gold. That perisheth. Though it be tried with fire. Might be found unto praise. And honor. And glory. At the appearing of Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for his word. While we are running our races. 
and uh, we are in the walk. We are there in the walk of faith. And when we're in this long journey, I know there's something you're going through. It might be different from what I'm going through, but one of the things the Holy Spirit does in our lives is to give us comfort. The Holy Spirit gives us comfort. Now, if you read in the book of First Peter chapter one, verses six to nine, it clearly talks about the manifest, the, the temptations that are there, the trials that are there, the tribulations that are there. But even if they come, even if they come and our faith is to be tried, the Holy Spirit is there not only to comfort us, but to assure us through the word of God that this is something that must happen at a season or at a time like this. But there, there is, of course, a way out. And what is the way out? Is for you to stand there. Let the Lord do what needs to be done and read the word of God and understand this is something that must be there. The trial of our faith through the long journey of faith while we are running this race or this walk of faith. And like I said, it's not easy. And that is one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit is there to encourage us, to show us, keep on moving. Don't stop because the journey ahead of you is still very long. But it's not to say that there are not going to be some issues ahead. But those issues should not pull, should not pull you down. First Peter chapter 1 from verse 6. You wherein you really need to greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Remember, the enemy is there to tempt us. But the Lord is there to test us. So why does the enemy tempt us? He tempts us so that to see whether we are going to fall. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit because when the temptations come, the Holy Spirit is already there to show you this is a temptation. You need to see, you, you need to realize that it is a temptation from the enemy and the Lord shall surely provide a way out for you because you are a son of God. Amen. The same way that Christ was able, was tempted after, during, after his prayers and fasting and he used the word of God and he stood firm. That is the time where we are in right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That while you're on this journey, while you're walking the race and you are standing firm in the Lord, these are the issues that are coming through us. It might be you're there, you're suffering from diseases. Maybe you're in the, in the trials of maybe of lack. You don't have uh, enough money. Uh, you're having uh, issues maybe with your children. There's something that you're going through that has been very difficult. But the Lord says that I have prayed and I'm praying for you so that the comforter can come to guide you into all truth, to comfort you at a time like this. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to do what he's supposed to do in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So apart from the temptations and the trials of life in this walk of faith, something else that we go through while we're running the race, of course, we have battles. Constant battles. Battles are there. Even though Lord, the Lord says that the battles belong to the Lord, we need to understand the battles are there to take us to another level. When this battle comes, you keep on praying. You've conquered in the realms of the spirit. Something else comes. Until the day of the Lord, the battles are consistent. And that is why in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, talks about the battles that are there in the realms of the spirit battles that we have to ensure that we fight on in the name of jesus christ ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 says that put on the whole armor of god that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil verses 12 that is where our script is coming from for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Amen. So you are in this journey. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are focusing and running your race. We need to know that the Lord has ensured that we do have the Holy Spirit to guide us because we need a comfort. We need to fight the battles that are there. We have the trials. We have the tribulations. Everything else that is surrounding us 
might not look good, but you have backup. Apart from the angels that are surrounding us, apart from the word of God, apart from the name of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that the Lord said he had to pray for, for the sake of his church. So at the end of the day, we can say that we have fought the good fight in the name of Jesus Christ. Fighting the good fight involves, invo uh, involves us actually being ready to, to be on our guard at all times. We've been called to be on our guard at all times. Amen. Even though sometimes it may feel like the battles have become so much, you feel like, I don't know whether I can do this anymore. Of course you can do it because it is not you. You cannot fight on your own. The Holy Spirit is there to ensure that while we are running the race, we don't get confused along the way because it's the spirit of truth to comfort us when we, we are in our low moments, to, to remind us about the words of Jesus along the way because we need to re, be reminded about the words of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. Run your race. Something else about battles. When you read the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 verses 12. It says this, that, um, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of God suffereth violence. So you are on your on your uh, so you are on your journey, on the walk of faith, and there are battles that you're going through. I want you to remember one thing: that the battles are there, and because this kingdom is such a great kingdom, is such a powerful kingdom, and you are being fought right, front, left, and center, because there is a battle. Of course, there must be a victory, and when it comes to the kingdom of God. We speak victory. We think victory. We breathe victory. Everything that comes along the way, we just have to have that mindset because we know at the end of the day, even if you are going to fight, there's something else that is greater that is waiting for us on the other side. So if this is the word of God and it says, from the time of John the Baptist, in the name of Jesus Christ, from the time of John the Baptist, verily I say to you, and from the days of John the Baptist, until now, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. So this is not an easy situation. As you run your race, expect to have those battles. As you run your race, expect the trials to be there. Expect the temptations to be there. Expect the battles to be there in the realms of the spirit. But the most exciting thing and the most powerful thing is that the Lord always knew that my church is going to be there. My church is going to need power. My church is going to, to need to see in the spirit. My church is going to, is going to need, is, no, is going to need as much backup as it can get. And I thank the Lord because when heaven is backing you up, everything else must push for everything else must bow down in the name of jesus christ when god is backing you up when the lord is backing you up you prayed as much as you can you've read the word of god you've done everything in your power to do it's time for you to see and wait upon the deliverance of the lord because god has his own way of delivering his children god has his own way of fighting for his children. God has his own way of speaking to us to ensure what he has purposed to happen in his church must happen in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is the hour whereby, fellow brethren, we need to understand that the race is still on. The journey is still on. As long as you're still alive today, this morning, we woke up by faith. We did not exactly know what to anticipate, but we woke up saying, okay, I've woken up today. I have to go to, to my workplace. I have to take my children to school. Amen. The things that I have to do, but we've done them through grace, knowing that it was a battle. You being alive today is a battle. Why? Because you have been chosen. Because there's somewhere that you're going. Because along the journey, at the end of the day, there's a place that we are expecting we are going to be with our Lord Jesus Christ and the enemy doesn't want it. 
But I thank the Lord because we know where we are heading, because we know who we are, because we know what we are carrying in the name of Jesus Christ. Run your race. And I'm telling you, everybody else that is running, I, I'm, everybody else that is running on this journey for fellow believers, they are all going to tell you, this is what I'm going through. This is what so far I am going through. And I know by the grace of God, the Lord is going to provide a way out. There's going to be an open door somewhere, but we are not going to give up. So we've been talking about Jesus Christ and how he was effective in his ministry and how he was able to succeed in the three years that he was there. Now for us, it's not, it's not different. It's not any different because we are still here fighting the good fight of faith, focusing on our journey, focusing on our lives. We are always uh, ensuring that we do what God wants us to do, but he left us with the Holy Spirit to uh, to assist us while we're still here. Now, when we go back uh, to the book of John, uh, John chapter, we will need the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. We are still uh, pushing on with the word of God. We are talking about the Holy Spirit and how he's supposed to, he is helping us, of course, in this, in this journey, on this walk of faith. John chapter 14, verse 16. We read from 16, we read 17, and uh, verses 18. He still says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So the Lord is actually still speaking to us and assuring us that he's still there with us. Verses 19. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live. You are also going to live. We must live. And we must have life in us. How do we have life in us? While we are running this race of God, because you're still talking about running your race. The Holy Spirit gives us life. He gives us hope. He reminds us of the things to come. He comforts us during this journey during this life in the name of jesus christ and that is why when christ was going through the difficult moments that he had because they had some very difficult times when he was with his disciples talking to his disciples and just preparing them for the work that was there at hand it was not easy but because he was able to succeed while he was running the race that was ahead of him today we can stand firm and say that our Lord Jesus Christ was able to do so much for the church. He set the best foundation, the greatest foundation. That is why we are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. So in our hearts, we know that we are not, we are not losing the war. The battle must be won. And it starts with us because we must understand that the reason why the Lord left us with the Holy Spirit is because he knew while we are still here, the things that are going to be against us, we are going to be, the, the times that are going to be very, very difficult for the church, but by the grace of God and by the hand of God and by the power of God, the world cannot understand what you're talking about, but the grace of the Holy Spirit has been released upon our lives so that you can make it, so that your family can make it, so that the church can make it so that our country can make it. You're always there, consistently telling the Lord, I need you to show me what to do, because at the end of the day, we must win this war. We must win this war. And that is why you cannot be like other people. There's something extra that is in you. There is, there's that power that is in you. There is that anointing that is in you. There is that grace that is working in you for the sake of the glory and the honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the Holy Spirit is there with us to run our race. Because number one, we have the enemy of the cross. And like we said, the work of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But aside from that, if you read the book of, of uh, James, 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 James chapter 4, James chapter 4, verse 7, it says that, um, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. 
resist the devil or the enemy and he will flee from you. We resist. We are submitting ourselves to God by seeking the Lord as much as we can, by drawing closer to him as much as we can, by focusing on the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that you have backup and you have the Holy Spirit fire. There's something called the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire that the disciples had, that is the fire that we have now. And you know, when, the, when, when there is fire there, when, this, when, um, when, the, when there is fire around you, nobody can, uh, can try and come in close to you because they know, of course, I'm going to get burned because we are in the race. And because we're in the race, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3. It says this. We have to be very aware of the enemy. It says this. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguile it through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ. That while we ran this race, he left us with his Holy Spirit. His power, his glory, his word, his name, his angels. What more? And you already have the backup of the Lord. Second, because the Lord knew that we are going to run the race and we have the Holy Spirit. He knew that there's something called the world that was here with us. And what does he say in the book of John? Chapter 16, verses 33. Open your Bible. John 16, 33 says this, that uh, we are on the race. It says this, that uh, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Our Lord is an overcomer. So should you be an overcomer. That is what God is trying to say. Lord is saying, I know there's so much that is happening in the world right now. There is hunger. There is wickedness. People are dying in accidents. People are being murdered. There's all, all sorts of witchcraft. Everything other evil thing is going on. But God is saying, you have the Holy Spirit. I know everything that is going on. I can see it even before it happens. I know it. But because you have the Holy Spirit, I need you to know that you must overcome. You must overcome while you run your race why is it called why is it, why, why is the lord saying you must must overcome because he already did it the diseases that are here with us we must overcome amen every other challenge every other thing that is working against us we must overcome because it's called the walk of faith amen you're running your race so we must have that overcoming spirit Something else the Lord says is that I've given you my spirit because I know that the flesh is there with us. But Galatians chapter 5 verses 17. Galatians chapter 5 verses 17. Galatians chapter 5 verses 17. You have a lot of scriptures today, but uh, our God is very, very faithful to guide us in what we need to do. We just have to overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Let me, let me read it. It says this, that um, for the flesh lasted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that he would. But I thank God. As long as the inner man is being fed with the word of God, as long as you pray, seeking the face of God, serving doing everything that it takes to keep the inner man burning on, on is on fire then our god is very faithful as you run your race the enemy of the cross cannot defeat us the world cannot defeat us the flesh cannot defeat us and that is why the lord actually saw it fit to ensure that we have the holy spirit with us what are we trying to say this morning this wednesday morning that the race is here with us, but the perfect will of God is there still with us. And the Lord knew that we are going to be here for a specific period because we all are here for a specific time. And he knew that while we are on the race, on the journey, on the walk of life, 
while we're still here doing the things that we are doing at the end of the day the power that was released as the cross was sufficient for us to be able to receive the holy spirit everybody at a personal level that this life might not be easy we might be going through different seasons of life but as we complete this series of running the race the holy spirit was something the lord had to pray for because god knew that apart from interceding for my church in the book of romans chapter 8 verses 34 apart from my church fighting against or, or or battling against the flesh battling against the world battling against the enemy of the cross and every other thing that might be against us the lord knew because they have my spirit surely they must conquer and because you're on the journey and i'm on this journey my prayer to you is that this morning from whatever it is that you're watching from that the same way our lord jesus was effective in what he did while he was he was here and he completed his mission effectively and did what he was supposed to do that we too are going to be able to succeed in what the lord wants us to succeed in in the name of jesus christ that the battle is there this kingdom is something that we have to take by force whether people like it or not but at the end of the day may the lord may the holy spirit help us to run our races to finish well amen to finish well in the spirit knowing that there is a crown for you there is a reward for you there is a place that has been kept safe for you for those who have decided and said i know that at the end there's something that i am going to receive and it's going to be a prize and it's not going to be an ordinary prize but one that has been kept for the saints in the name of jesus christ so we've been doing the series of uh uh running your race and the lord has been very very faithful to us and there are so many things that we've been able to see but at the end of the day the holy spirit is the key we need to make sure that we have actually given him the place that he needs to be given and to allow him to be able to speak to us and to guide us in this long journey of faith because we cannot do it alone nobody can do anything alone and i want to thank the lord because our god is very faithful and he cannot leave us he cannot forsake us now the book of first second timothy chapter four he says this verse seven and these are the words that i'm praying we are all going to say them at one point in our lives in the name of jesus christ i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith verses eight henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous child shall give me at that day and not only me but to all but to all of them also love his appearing i bless the name of the lord and i thank god for you for being able to follow and to hear what the holy spirit is saying run your race don't look at other people focus on your lane focus on your lane listen to what the lord is trying to tell you and uh i want to believe the same way that our lord walked in victory the same way that our lord really fought for the church at the cross the same way our lord just stood up for us and did everything that he had to do at the end of the day i want to let you know we are coming out victorious because we have the power we have the strength we have the grace because it has been released before for the sake of the church yes maybe you're suffering right now but it's going to come to an end yes maybe financially you're not stable maybe there's something you everybody else has just run away from you nobody wants to be close to you the most important person in your life right now 
It is the Holy Spirit, your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I know that our God is very faithful. He's going to take us through. He's going to enable us and he's going to give us the victory that we deserve in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with our souls. So as we wind up, I want to thank us all so much for being able to come to our Wednesday service. And uh, on Wednesdays, we always get to share the word of God because the word of God is very powerful. It is the truth. It is what Christ left us with to remind us of who we are, to cleanse us, to wash us, to encourage us, to rebuke us, to restore us, whatever it is the Lord has for us in his word. That is the truth. So you keep the fire burning. Remember that we serve a mighty God. And remember that if you're going to run this race, ensure that and know that the Holy Spirit is part of the packet that we have and it's something the Lord prayed for and he gave it to us. And I thank God because we have our victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to pray that you have a good day. I'm also going to pray for you that you're not going to get tired. You're not going to get tired in the journey that... You are not, you are going to get to the place where the Lord wants you to get, that you're going to fight the good fight, that you're going to stand up for Jesus Christ and you're going to see what the Lord is going to do for you. So we are going to meet again on Friday because on Friday uh, we are going to have, uh, I'm going to go to the new month that is ahead of us. We always have our monthly cashers and I'm going to see you there uh, in the new month of uh, October. And I want to let you know that. Not everybody has been fortunate to see uh, this day. Those people have not seen this day. Not that they did not deserve it. They deserve it, but they, they're gone. But God has been faithful to you. The Lord has been with you. Jesus has been interceding on your behalf, has been standing with you. And I want to let you know that we serve a mighty God. If you could just see the battles that the Lord fights for us. You know, sometimes you don't, we, we don't get to see what God is doing. But I can assure you in the spirit, things are very hot. Christ is fighting for his church. So you stand in your position. Run your race. Do the best that you can do and leave everything else to the Lord. So I'm honored to have you on this platform. This is my Facebook page. You can also share it to, with as many people as you can. And you're not following Revival Sister Betty, but you're following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. We are following the works of Christ and what he's doing. So I'm really blessed have you here i want us to pray and you're going to be blessed father in the name of jesus christ i thank you for your word we've been talking about running our races oh lord help us to run our races to stand in our lane to follow the rules to do what you're supposed to do while in the race and when the time comes for us to receive our prize oh lord you're going to honor us you're going to wipe away our tears oh my god you are going to you are going to do what has been left that has not been done, oh my God. I thank you for our crowns. I thank you for the victory that is there through Christ Jesus. And I thank you because of the Holy Spirit who is in us. And you said that the Holy Spirit is supposed to be with us forever until the time come for the church, oh my God. You are a mighty, you are a mighty God. You are a faithful God. I thank you for your power and for your glory. We are not regretting who we are. We don't regret because of the decisions that we made of following our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I thank you for every other person that is worth this. For those who are down, renew their spirits. For those who are going through a difficult time, my God, Holy Spirit, keep on taking control upon their lives. I thank you because we are already blessed by your word. I also thank you for Friday. We're going to be here, oh my God, knowing that we deserve to thank you, knowing that we're going to enter into the new month with thanksgiving knowing that there's something that you've prepared for us in the coming month for those who are mourning i pray for your comfort for those who are struggling i pray that you're going to uplift them oh god as your servants in the name of jesus christ i thank you i bless your name and i worship you in jesus name we believe and pray amen thank you so much for coming in for the service i'm going to see you again on friday by the grace of god the lord has a word for us and uh i know that his grace is sufficient. You have a wonderful day. Have a good day. I pray over the blessings of God upon your life. I declare the blood of Jesus also. For whatever it is that you are, may the Lord remember your family. 
may I remember your country, may I remember you, whatever it is that you've been praying for. I pray for the perfect will of God upon your life. Don't look up down upon yourself. Know that the Lord loves you. He has chosen you. He has separated you for his good work. And I thank you so much for being here. So let me appreciate Brother Bernard for being here. We also have Git, Brother Gitau here, Isaiah Kiranya. We have uh, Mr. Joshua Kimanzi, there's Washira Kelvin. We have James and every other person that is just watching in silence. Thank you so much. God bless you so much. Have a wonderful day. Have a blessed week. I'm going to see you again on Friday. Shalom, shalom. Thank you so much.